Welcome to Car Pilot Pro. This is the first video in a series uh, where we will build a bait boat and the end result will look almost similar to this one. This is a previous build I made. It's a really small boat. And the, in this first video, we're going to introduce you to all things that we are going to put in there and set the scope for the boat build. The boat I'm about to build is really small, 44 centimeters long perfect partner for the roving angler. Uh, it's going to be a challenge uh, with all the components we're going to put in, so let's have a look at that. So the hull is a Alpha Mini made in Germany. As I said, it's small. Uh, I'm going to have two motors, uh, both brushless, and they're really adorable small. Uh, we're going to look at them later. Going to use a couple of hobby wing quick runs, uh, perfect companion for brushless um, uh, motors. The batteries need to be small as well, so I'm going to build them. It's going to be 12.6 uh, volt lithium ion batteries. I'm not sure if I'm going to use my Radiolink Kick Pixhawk or the Holy Bro. I have uh, two. It largely depends on the GPS that I'm going to use. Either I use the Radiolink one or I have a Matexis uh, prepared as well. For telemetry, <coughs> I'm going to use a SkyDroid Bluetooth, uh, which comes with the SkyDroid T10. But I'm also going to add uh, a UDP uh, as backup using Mavbridge. Uh, somehow I will try to fit in a Dragonfly uh, 5 Pro. It's going to be a challenge. And I'm also going to build a bait thrower, which I can put on top. Um, because uh, the weight is paramount here, I'm going to use a brushless there as well. And ho somehow solve the challenge with adding three uh, wires through the upper hole. Before I build a boat, I find it very useful to make a plan. And uh, I made a drawing of how I'm going to build this. Uh, quick introduction to the drawing. In the middle we have uh, two batteries. Then uh, the black and the red lines, that's ground and uh, power wiring. Uh, if nothing is noted, uh, then it's 12.6 volts everywhere. Uh, the orange boxes, there are, they are power consumers. And the gray boxes, they show where I intend to put my servo connectors into the Pixhawk. Now let's first have a look at the powering of the Pixhawk. Um, I typically use a, a Pixhawk power module and it will supply 5 volts for the Pixhawk. That's the orange part of the Pixhawk. And that will make sure that the Pixhawk can start, it can power all its peripherals like uh, GPS and so on. And it can also uh, power your radio receiver that you plug in. The power module does not power the servo side. So with the exception of the RC, uh, all to the left here, none of the other servo contacts have any power at all. And you need to provide them with a separate power source. I recommend around 5 volt. Please do not go about 5.7 volts. The Pixhawk has a redundant system here that will draw power from the servo side if the Pixhawk power module fails to work. And if it's about 5.7 volts, you will have possibly a problem with your Pixhawk and you might even damage it permanently. Finally, one really important thing to remember is to only power the servo side using one and only one source of power. There are many ways to power your servo side. You could either use a BEC or BEC or battery eliminator circuit. But also if you look at the specifications for your electronic speed controllers, you will often find that they have a built-in battery eliminator circuit as well. And in my boat, I actually have three electronic speed controllers and they all have built-in battery eliminator circuit. And to avoid the problem, I do it like this. If you look at the drawing, 
you will see that's only the electronic speed controller for my bait thrower, which has a red line, providing 5 volts. For all the other electronic speed controller, I drag out the red wire, tape it so it can't come uh, make a shortage or, or, or something within the boat. And then I can also put them back later if I need to calibrate my electronic speed controllers. But only one source provides the 5 volt power. Some final comments on the drawing here. The black line is then the ground wire and it's continuous throughout the entire boat build system. The red wires coming from the battery is continuous until it hits the relay. And when I push the power on button, it will close the delay and make the red or the 12.6 voltage continuous throughout the entire build as well. Now, even it, if this is kind of typical for boat builds, uh, just a word of warning. Whenever you swap batteries uh, for newly charged ones, swap them both. If not, there's going to be a huge difference in the voltage between the old and the new battery, and that's really not good. So always swap both batteries when you swap batteries. In addition to making a drawing uh, to plan the build, I also like to test my components before I build them into the boat. It's much better this way if case of one component is damaged. And in the next video, we will focus on preparation of a pixhawk.